hey, I've got an interesting puzzle for you. So I've got a bunch of cubes here you can see. And what I want to do is I just want to know how many different ways are there for me to put them in a row like this where, in fact, uh, I want to know how many different color patterns there are. So for example, that's one color pattern. Another color pattern would be just to do this and put this way up here. That's a whole different color pattern. So how many different color patterns are there? Well, that's a really hard counting question. And as you know, counting questions usually involve various things, including the factorial and things of that sort. This is an example of what's called a distinguishable permutation. Because in fact, there are some things here that just are, are alike, namely the like colors. For example, these. Uh, yellow ones, it doesn't matter which order I, I put them in here, it would still be the same color pattern. So I have to take that into account somehow. And there's a really cool formula involving factorials that actually capture this uh, type of uh, distinguishable permutation. You take the total number of objects that you have here, which we're going to call n, and look at n factorial and divide that by a product. And the product will be the total number of objects you have of a particular type, in this case, a particular color. In this case, there are three yellow. It looks like there are five green, and there are two red. And so, of course, it makes sense that if you just add up the numbers n1 plus n2 out to nk, that total sum of those numbers will actually equal n, because that's the total number that you have. But now we're going to compartmentalize them by, by uh, the ones that are actually indistinguishable. And this is called distinguishable permutations. So if I want to actually find the number of different color patterns possible, placing these three cubes in a row, where again, I want to differentiate this color combination from this, but not this from this, then we use this formula. And so here we go. So how many are there total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10, or 10 factorial, divided by, and then now we have to take a look at, at all the different colors we have and how many of each. So there are two reds, so that's two factorial. There are three yellows, so I have to multiply that by three factorial. And then one, two, three, four, five greens. And so this actually will represent the total number of different ways of ordering, how many different patterns there are of ordering these things. So now we have to figure out what that number is. So how would you do that? Well, I don't know how you would do it. I'll tell you how I'll do it. I see 5 factorial, which is kind of inside that 10 factorial if you start writing it out. So 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's 5 factorial. So I'm just going to stop there and write 5 factorial for the rest. And then uh, 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, which is 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And then 5 factorial is 5 factorial. Well, now we can actually simplify this a little bit. The 5 factorials actually cancel. The 6s actually cancel. And I can even cancel the, the 2 with the, the 8 and put a 4 here. And so now what do I see? Well, now I've just got to multiply all these numbers together. And so I see uh, 9 times 4, which is 36. And I have to multiply that by 7, which is going to give me a 2 and a 4. And this is 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 25. And so I have 252, but then I have to multiply that by 10. And so I see that this equals 2,520. Now, what does that represent? That represents the total number of different ways that I can make a different color pattern using these blocks. Isn't that a ridiculous number? 2,520. That's a lot. But there's a lot of ways of putting the green here, putting the green here, putting the green here, putting the red here. I mean, I just showed you three right there. Now there's another 2,517 to go. Cool. Anyway, the important thing is that counting is hard. And some of these wonderful formulas that allow us to quickly count are really powerful. We have to understand how to apply them, what they mean, the different types of permutations, and then we're good to go. I hope you enjoy the counting conundrums that surround your life. I'll see you soon.